Reduction and fixation of forearm fractures. A short oblique fracture of the radius, just distal to the mid-shaft, combined with a mid-shaft multifragmented fracture of the ulna. The radial fracture, when reduced, will be held by a seven-hole LCDCP, incorporating a lag screw. The obliquity of the radial fracture line will determine the sighting of the plate and the sequence of screw insertion. Note the almost intact interosseous membrane. For the ulna, indirect reduction will be followed by fixation with a 12-hole LCDCP used as a bridge plate. Place the model in the vise as shown. A pointed reduction forceps is used to hold provisional reduction of the radial fracture. Use a template to contour the plate to the lateral surface of the radius so as to leave three holes proximal and four holes distal to the fracture line. The need to place the lag screw at a right angle to the fracture line will determine the final position of the plate. It is useful to mark the screw hole sites once the plate has been contoured to match the template. The reduction forceps has been placed in the optimum line for the lag screw. The screw will be inserted through the plate once it's been sighted at its pre-planned position. The first plate hole will be drilled proximally, followed by the distal load hole as shown. These screws will hold the fracture while the lag screw is inserted. We now show the two drill guides for the LCDCP. The universal drill guide allows for eccentric placement of a screw when not depressed and neutral placement of a screw when depressed. The yellow end of the LCDCP drill guide with the arrow pointing towards the fracture will provide an eccentric screw hole. The green end of the LCDCP drill guide, also with the arrow pointing towards the fracture, will provide a neutral screw hole. However, in our exercise, the green neutral guide is not used. With the universal drill guide and a 2.5 millimeter drill bit, a proximal hole is made at the previously selected site. It is measured and tapped with a 3.5 millimeter tap. As the pre-bent plate is applied, the fracture is reduced again. And once more held with the pointed reduction forceps. The first distal screw hole is made, using the yellow drill guide, to produce an eccentric load position. Measuring, tapping, and insertion follow in the usual manner.
the reduction forceps can be removed. We now use the universal drill guide to position the lag screw through the plate. A central 2.5 millimeter drill hole through both cortices is made and tapped. A 3.5 millimeter hole is then drilled in the proximal cortex only. Note some residual movement at the fracture site. As the lag screw, in this case a shaft screw, is inserted, the fracture site closes up to display absolute stability. The remaining screws may then be inserted in a neutral position. Note when the radial fracture has been reduced, the ulnar fractures are drawn into approximate alignment by ligamentotaxis. To reduce and fix the ulna, the fracture is first spanned by a 12-hole LC-DCP fixed by two screws inserted in the proximal main fragment, well clear of the fracture. The plate is loosely clamped to the bone and a further 3.5 millimeter screw is placed one centimeter distal to it, as shown. The bone spreader is used to exert traction on the distal main fragment. The fracture fragments are teased into position with the sharp hook. Attachment of the plate to the ulna is completed, usually with three screws in each main fragment. The traction screw can be removed. The fragments in the fracture site are left undisturbed in accordance with the bridge plate technique. The final configuration leaves the radial fracture stably fixed in compression with a plate and lag screw while relative stability has been imparted to the multi-fragment ulnar fracture by push-pull reduction and bridge plate fixation. Using these combined techniques, early motion can be achieved in this unstable fracture configuration.